Hello, I'm Marion, and I'm going to be talking to you today about your stethoscope. You can use your stethoscope for listening to arteries, like the carotids found in your neck, the heart, of course, the lungs, the big arteries, or any of the other arteries that are large enough to listen to, like the aorta, look at my beautiful aorta, and the belly. The first thing I want to talk about is the basics of the stethoscope's anatomy. Okay, so the first piece is the headset, and there are the earbuds here, or the earpieces here. The second piece is the tubing. My tubing has a lovely toy for the kitties on it, and this is where the sound is transmitted. And this is the head of the stethoscope. This is the part that goes on the patient's skin, and this is where you're listening from. On this particular model, there are two flat ends or diaphragms, and the diaphragms are the listening portion. For this model, this is the adult sized diaphragm, and this is the pediatric sized diaphragm. Okay? Many models will come with two separate heads where one side is the diaphragm and it's covered like this one is, and the other side is considered a bell which we'll talk about later, and that is open. There's no covering over it. So you may have a model like that, or you may have a model like this. Look at your instruction manual to see which kind of model you have to see what the purpose is for each separate side of your stethoscope. If you do have a two-sided head on your stethoscope, which most of you should as medical students, then you're probably going to have to engage one side or the other by turning the head of the stethoscope. You'll hear a click when the side that you want to use is actually engaged. Let's now talk about the difference between a diaphragm and a bell. So again, on this model, we have two separate ends that are made to work independently. So each end will work as a diaphragm or a bell. A diaphragm is a acoustic device that is ma made for optimally listening to high-pitched sounds. Examples of high-pitched sounds are the S1 and S2, or the lub-dub sound. A bell is for listening to low-pitched sounds. Uh, an example of a low-pitched sound is S3 or S4 that you would hear, which are extraneous sounds that you may hear in the heart, or a brewery or the turbulence you might hear in an artery. And I'll show you how to use it on the pediatric side, the smaller side of my stethoscope. So in order to engage the diaphragm of this side, all I have to do is press very firmly down. You'll notice that there's a little bit of indentation there. That means that I'm engaging the diaphragm. So when I listen here, pressing firmly down and listening for more high-pitched sounds. In order to engage the bell, all I do is gently place it on the skin so that it's not pushing down so hard that it, it makes a dent, but it's also create, creating a seal with the gray por whole gray portion is actually on my skin. To engage the bell, I'm setting it lightly on my skin, but creating a seal. To engage the diaphragm, I'm pushing more firmly down bell, diaphragm. Another important piece to using your stethoscope is knowing how it goes into the ears. Know that there are two ways of putting the stethoscope in. One is the wrong way and one is the correct way. So you can't just stick them in and expect it to work, okay? Your ear canals are facing relatively forward. So when you put your stethoscope in, you're going to make sure that your earpieces are also facing relatively forward. That's why they're designed with this angle. So I'm making sure that when I put them in my ears, the earpieces are pointing relatively towards my nose. If you put them in backwards, where the earpieces are 
facing backwards and not into your ear canal. You won't be able to hear anything and you'll think that there's something wrong with your stethoscope. A few tips. Watch for rubbing of the tubing while you're listening. So maybe the tube brushes up against the patient or brushes up against your own body because then you'll hear things and you'll wonder what you're hearing and it's really just because something is rubbing against the tubing. Make sure that wherever you listen, especially on the cardiac exam when you're listening to the heart, that you listen with both the bell and the diaphragm in each setting.